Today, there are more tips out there than ever on how to paint more expressively and with greater technique, but which of these tips might be undermining your practice and hurtling you toward burnout? In this video, you'll learn how to separate the strategies that'll help you to love your practice and your paintings from the ones that might sabotage your studio practice so that your art can be something that brings you the fulfillment you want for the long haul. I've helped hundreds of artists to successfully navigate this minefield, just like Kelly, who went from overworked and burnt out, in her words, to rekindling her passion and finding genuine comfort and joy at the easel, all while working on paintings that move her toward the exact style she wants to achieve in her work. If you are working on taking your paintings to a new level and you're finding it frustrating and painful, I'm here to help. There's a link below in the description to book a call to speak directly with me so I can guide you in this process. All right, want to avoid burnout like the plague? Let's get into the first thing you need to know. The first habit of a thoroughly burnt out painter is that you are spending months on single paintings. This may seem like dedication, but this brand of perfectionism is often a fast track to frustration and exhaustion with your art practice. Let's be real. Constantly tweaking and never finishing your work can really stifle your growth as an artist. It gives you fewer unique compositions, each with their own distinct challenges to learn from, but it also reinforces the idea that finishing a painting is always going to be painstaking and laborious. And yes, there are absolutely painters who thrive on this kind of slow, methodical work. And even for the faster painters, we can often learn loads by intentionally slowing down and taking more time on a painting like I am for this portrait here. But for most of you watching my channel, you're probably here because you're drawn to the kind of direct paintings that are designed to be completed in closer to one sitting anyway. And you're probably wishing that you could more comfortably create pieces that you're proud of in one sitting, rather than looking to slow down and work on one painting for even longer than you're doing now. So if this is you, I would recommend challenging yourself with some small paintings that are designed to be finished in one sitting and hold yourself to that time limit. Simpler compositions like an 8x10 head study with clear lighting that's easy to interpret tend to work best for this kind of assignment. I ask every one of my students to complete a painting like this when we work together, and most never thought that they could complete a painting in such a short amount of time, and this breakthrough feels like a genuine victory. Moving on to habit number two, obsessing over details. So this next habit is definitely an extension of the first, and that's that you're obsessing over tiny details instead of capturing the overall impression for your painting. Sometimes less is more, and the magic is in the impression of your subject rather than minute specifics. And not to mention, it's easy to imagine burning out if you're trying to fill a 30 by 40 inch canvas with a one haired brush. This kind of painstaking work can easily beg you to think of your studio time as a grind. So if this is you, try backing up and squinting more at your painting and your subject to ask if you're capturing their overall essence rather than trying to capture every minute detail. Your painting should go a lot faster, and you'll likely end up with a painterly result that captures the spirit of the sitter as well as your highly detailed work does. Next, we come to habit number three, which is an unsustainable painting routine. Let's explore the other side of the coin, shall we? And that is focusing on volume over sustainability when it comes to your painting practice. Bumping out countless paintings may seem productive, but without taking the time to reflect, learn, and recharge with fresh inspiration, painting becomes an awful lot like running on a treadmill. Lots of effort, no forward progress. One of the most frequently asked questions I receive from artists who start working with me to level up their paintings is, how much time do I need to commit to this to make it happen? And I always tell them that consistency and sustainability far outweigh painting volume or painting frequency. For the past three years, I have painted on average one day a week, and I've seen tremendous growth in my own technique and style in that time because I've been consistent and because I've been intentional. My student Michael just shared some tremendous breakthroughs with me this week, and he shared that on average, he is painting about once a month. He's simply very intentional with how he spends that time. And the result is that within the past year, Michael has actually gotten to the point where there are no longer any skill gaps that are stopping him from painting the way he's always dreamt of painting. 
So for you, I'd ask, how much would I genuinely enjoy painting on a regular basis? What is sustainable enough that I'll keep enjoying it and that I can stick to it in the long haul? That is what should be your schedule. And speaking of volume, habit number four is participating in 30-day challenges that require you to paint every day. While challenges can boost your discipline or get you over some initial resistance around developing a rhythm in your studio, they can have some real downsides. As one of my students who is a full-time professional gallery artist put it, these challenges could easily be renamed Achieve Burnout in Only 30 Days, and my experience matches this. Just this week, another student explained to me that after completing a 30-day challenge back in January, she hasn't completed a painting in nearly three months and proclaimed the burnout is real. As an aside, together we got her back on track, but it was definitely an uphill battle to do so as she decompressed from this challenge. Having done challenges like this myself, my new mantra is that if I want to paint on a more regular basis, I should still make sure to schedule regular time to recharge because being prolific shouldn't come at the expense of my well-being or the quality of my work. And the same is true for you. As we reach the middle of our list, let me remind you that if these habits sound all too familiar, it's not too late to change course. If you're itching to have an overall structure to follow to reach your goals, instead of a 30-day challenge, check out the link in the description for personalized guidance and support from me. I'm here to give you a clear step-by-step -step process and structure to follow in order to help you to revitalize your painting journey. Dovetailing right into habit number five, we have the pitfall of focusing purely on the number of paintings that you produce. I see this come up most frequently in artists who are producing a body of work for something like a solo exhibition with a gallery, but this can affect you no matter where you are in your painting journey. One piece of advice I was recently given by an artist who has witnessed countless professionals burn out from solo show pressure was to avoid these kinds of projects whenever you can, and instead think about a constant trickle of new work that you can produce over the long term. Participate in things like group shows instead of solo shows, or have multiple galleries with just a few pieces in inventory instead of trying to sprint to amass a 20 painting body of work under a deadline. I would add to remember why you started painting in the first place. Connect with your art. Don't just produce it. All right, now we move on to habit number six, tedious drills. So number six involves focusing too much on tedious painting drills and not enough on what's actually fun for you to paint. While exercises to improve are important for your artwork, we are bound to get bored and discouraged if we aren't connecting with what we actually love about art making. I think about Mary Poppins here and how a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. In practice with my students, this means that I work with them to prescribe not only exercises that will best help them to address skill gaps that are holding them back, but also understanding how to customize those exercises to the student's individual interests, aesthetic, and preferred way of working. So if someone comes to me drawn to painting portraits that are set in striking afternoon light, the last thing I want to ask them to do is plop an apple down on a table and paint it over and over again for months. Instead, I want to find out if the same outcome can be achieved through actually painting the kinds of compositions the student wants to paint. So if this is you and you have a particular exercise in mind, but it feels really tedious, I would ask, is there a way for you to fine tune this exercise to actually tailor it to your specific goal or for you to focus on a subject that's going to be more inspiring? In my experience, the answer is almost always yes. And lastly, we arrive at the habit of over-criticism. This looks like being overly focused on progress to the point that you become disconnected from your sense of enjoyment. Art should be fun, not just a series of self-critiques. And look, I get it. I'm an ambitious painter. I love a challenge. I love learning and feeling myself improving, but it's okay not to be perfect. It's normal for progress not to be linear and to have a great painting one day and a muddy mess the next. When it comes to getting better at something as nuanced as painting, you have to strike a balance between learning how to effectively critique and analyze your work and being present enough in the moment to just get lost in your art sometimes, to enter the elusive flow state, to enjoy where you're at in the journey right now instead of telling yourself, I'll just be happy when I can paint like my goal. So try to approach your critiques with a sense of gentleness and support for yourself. 
practice a sense of gratitude for where you are in the journey and what you're working through right now. I find that, as counterintuitive as it sounds, is truly what sets you up to paint the way you've always wanted. And there you have it, the seven habits of a thoroughly burnt out painter. If you see yourself in any of these habits, take a step back and remember, it's about enjoying the journey as much as the final painting. If you're struggling with this, click the link below. I'm ready to help you to make your painting practice more joyful and sustainable while helping you to paint the way you've always dreamed of. If you have any habits that you have found lead to burnout in your own art practice that I haven't mentioned here, let me know in the comments. I would love to learn from your experiences as well. I look forward to hearing from you, and until next time, happy painting.